It is my honor to introduce a great ally to veterans and a friend of the American Legion. Before running for Congress, our guest worked as a farmer and taught music. He also served in the Montana State Senate. In 2006, he was elected to the U.S. Senate to represent Montana. He is chairman of the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs has been, and has been the tip of the spear in terms of making 2022 an incredible year for veterans legislation from passing the PACT Act to overseeing the implementation of the VA Mission Act. American Legion family, it is my pleasure to welcome the American Legion's 2019 Distinguished Public Service Award recipient, the Honorable Senator John Testa. Thank you for the warm introduction, and uh, I'm going to start with an apology. I am sorry that I'm uh, a little late for this. Uh, I was at the Pentagon meeting with the Secretary of Defense, in Austin, and Assistant Secretary Kath Hicks, and the Comptroller Mike McCord, and the Vice Chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff talking about the budget that's coming up for this next year for our active military, for our Defense Department. and. Uh, it was, uh, it was a good conversation. Um, I want to thank you for the introduction. It was uh, very, very kind, and I want to start by giving all of you, uh, the folks who are in the American Legion, who traveled far and wide to be here, uh, thank you for what you do every day to make sure that the United States government lives up to the promises that we make our fighting men and women after they return to civilian life. I would say I'm especially uh, glad to recognize the Montanans that are in attendance. Hopefully they're here. Scott Miller, Chris Nelson, Candace Herring, thank you very, very much. You know, addressing this American Legion brings back fond memories to me of a guy by the name of Merv Gunderson. Now Merv, some of you probably knew, he was from Belgrade, Montana. He was a leader in the American Legion in Montana and nationally. He uh, spent his life dedicated to serving our nation's veterans, and in his case, fellow veterans. Uh, Merv is no longer with us, but the example that he set should inspire us every day uh, that, to know that our collective efforts are very important to make sure that we're holding people accountable uh, to take care of the folks who have served us and fought for us and protected our freedoms in our U.S. military. Look, I don't need to tell you, for generations, the Legion has been a leader in supporting our veterans. Um, with you as partners, we have been working incredibly hard to make sure our nation veterans have uh, quality health care and good paying jobs and affordable housing. Uh, that is, reason for this is quite simple. Back in the day when you were in the military, is true today, these folks put their lives on the line every day in incredibly difficult conditions. To defend, to, to defend this country and our freedoms. Um, these are Americans uh, that we all can be proud of because they stand up for the values that America is, uh, is foundational for our country. Unfortunately, uh, far too many folks who work in D.C., both on the elected side of the ledger and the bureaucratic side of the ledger, uh, don't understand that sacrifice that both the veteran and their families provide and have done. Uh, they especially don't uh, understand the challenges that our veterans have in, in rural America. Uh, and that is why I am particularly proud that last year we've got the largest expansion of VA health care ever in this country in a bill known as the VA PACT Act that's going to take care of our toxic exposed veterans. It is a bill that every veteran service organization in this country was their number one priority. And it is a bill that never would have been passed if not for you. And the reason I say that is because when people brought up bogus comments about this bill and what it wouldn't do, we actually saw folks on the Senate floor 
fist bumping one another, cheering the fact that the, our veterans weren't going to get the benefits, the health care benefits that they have earned due to the exposures that they've had in service. And that doesn't just include burn pits, it includes Agent Orange, it includes a number of things. And so I am here to say to you, thank you. Your voice was heard and we ended up passing a very important piece of legislation that impacts probably the majority of your members, okay? Now there's another challenge with the PACT Act, and that's make sure that ruthless folks out there don't unnecessarily, and for no good reason, take some of these benefits from our veterans. So oversight of that is gonna be critically important. And there are going to be bills put up that give the veteran choice, but also protects them from ruthless folks that are out there, and we all know they're there. So what are we gonna do this session? Other than passing a budget that meets the needs of our veterans, which is going to be really, really important, by the way, because some folks serve in, in Congress, in the House in particular, want to roll back the budget. Well, if they roll back the budget, they roll back the funding for our veterans. Don't let them tell you anything different. That's a bad idea. And I'm all about fiscal discipline, but when you make promises to the people who serve this country, you live up to those promises. <clears throat> So assuming we get that done, and we will get that done, uh, the next piece of legislation that is very significant is another one that I think you guys are fully aware of called the Major Richard Starr Act, which uh, writes an injustice that currently prevents medically retired combat veterans from receiving their full military benefits. Makes no sense whatsoever, by the way. <laughs> Makes no sense. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to be working on that, and with your support, by the way, not unlike the PACT Act, we'll get this baby across the finish line too. Because let me tell you something, democracy works when people speak up and make sure their opinions are heard, and the American Legion is right there making sure that democracy works. Thank you for that. <clears throat> then finally, I will say one other thing that we need to focus on on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee and Congress in general, and you guys too, and gals, is that we need to make sure the VA has the capacity. Okay, I just talked about the PACT Act being a, a major increase, quite frankly, from a VA standpoint, workload. From my standpoint, the right thing to do. The VA needs to step up and make sure we got the doctors, the nurses, and the facilities, but we need to give them the ability to make sure that that happens, okay? And that all facilities go away. And we've got a number of bills to do that that I'm pushing on bipartisan in nature in the United States Senate that we're gonna be working uh, to get done. Once again, you're critical in this equation. If your voices are heard, it will make a big, big difference. I know that some of you, maybe all of you heard from uh, Simon earlier in the week, I was told. God bless you for listening to him. No, he's a great guy, smart as hell, and somebody that quite frankly uh, knows how to get the job done. Him and Tony are in, and Faye are incredible on my staff, and I just want to, and others too, I could go down the list, but the truth is, is that they're good people. They want to listen to you, they want to hear your opinions so that we can do the right thing. Bottom line is this, uh, tomorrow, you're gonna be in front of a joint session of the House and Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, the American Legion is. We look forward uh, to your comments. We take them seriously because as I've said in every one of these hearings, and I will probably say it again tomorrow, I take my instructions from you, the veterans who have served this country. <laughs> and together and together, we will make sure those commitments are lived up to. God bless you all, thank you for what you do, and have a great convention, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.